guys, and welcome to SMLT Artist Podcast. Today we have two lovely uh, urban sketchers. It's Isabel and Mara. Welcome. We come uh, even from Canada to us, so it's really nice to have you here. So, how are you doing today? Is it your first time in Vilnius? Yes, it is. It is my first time in in Vilnius, and uh, it's a lovely place. Like from what I've seen from from um, how we moved here on the bus, it's yeah. it's a really <laughs> it's a really lovely it's a really lovely place. It's fantastic. So far, so good. It's mm -hmm. first day here, but it's really lovely, and we we like the look of it already. Mm -hmm. You will see us for a few more days, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Looking looking forward to explore the city more. Great, great. So today I have some uh, questions for us, and I am here. And uh, so hi again. And of course, to start off, I uh, want to ask you how you discover urban sketching, and maybe when. Oh, um, urban sketching started for me because um, I'm, I'm based in Toronto, mm -hmm. and then my company assigned me in to Vancouver for for a, a few years, mm -hmm. like le less than a, a year, actually. So um, when I, I was there, um, I wanted to go back to Toronto, and I'm I'm looking for groups. Um, since I started little bits of art projects when I was in Vancouver. I'm looking for artists as well when when I came back to Toronto and I looked up at meetup the meetup group and saw there's a meetup at uh, Mount Pleasant Cemetery like Mount Pleasant that's across from my apartment so I have no reason not to go yeah. so that's how it started and that was in 20 late 2016 2016 so that's how I discovered Urban Sketchers. I attended all their meetups mm -hmm. every week if they have one or whenever they have it. So I got hooked. So, so you liked it. Really. I, I liked it. it. I stayed in it since 2016. It's like I found my flock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So I, I stayed on to the Urban Sketching group. Uh, I guess I've been drawing all my life, you know, since kid and then also while studying architecture at the university in Warsaw. So that's probably my path there. But then, I, you know, there was some time when I wasn't doing that, when family got in the way. But eventually I came back to, to uh, drawing and sketching and I stumbled upon this uh, uh, website called urbansketchers.org. It's like, what's that? You know, and that's where it was the beginning of it. And that was like 10 years ago, I think now, mm -hmm. and it's been going on steady since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's been a long time. Uh, and what art techniques do you usually use, or which ones you like more? Art techniques, or um, I actually prefer um, watercolors. So, watercolors and pens. Or fountain pen, like because it, my my art evolved. I'm not a professional artist. I never sold art. I only learned sketching when I joined Urban Sketchers. Compared to Marek, who's been drawing all his life, um, I'm the exact opposite. So it's me. I never learned in school. Although I took up a few units in architecture, but that was long time ago. When I, you know, when your parents wanted you to have a title after your title, you know, and I said like, okay, but I just want to take business. No, business is like in every corners of the world. Exactly why I like it. Okay, why don't you take up architecture? Okay, fine. So eventually, I quit school for architecture and went to business because my grades wasn't good when I was studying architecture when I was in business like I'm on top of the class so, so that's it and then now I'm back to art so maybe I have a calling I didn't know about it and it just came naturally because it's my way it's not forced on me you know so that's how that's how my art evolved and so my favorite going back to your question is simple watercolors and pen and uh, and it's still evolving up to now I I love using different types of art materials ah, I'm an ink 
guy, you know. I'm, I'm an ink pen. I, I happen to have a, a sketchbook here, which is an SMLT, by the way. <laughs> by the way, it's SMLT. And it, it's uh, filled with, uh, you know, ink sketches. And that's, uh, that's what I like to do, is drawing these type of uh, things, either in black and white, or sometimes with a little bit of a color, with, you know, or like a monochrome, monotone, that type of thing. This actually is the Mount Pleasant Cemetery that Isabel <laughs> mentioned earlier. I remember that. Because, she, you know, it's, it, this is like, those are, you know, it, it's a cemetery, quite, very quiet spot to sketch. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a lot of that. And uh, then um, some of them are a little bit in color. Here, there's a tiny bit in color here mm -hmm. with watercolors. It's also, um, you know, I love this B5 horizontal um, mixed media format. landscape landscape format um, that uh, that uh, it's really so very very uh, very good for urban sketching, but also very portable because when you close this, it's not much to carry mm. around. Yeah. It's not heavy, so it's uh, I like that that concept. Thank you for making it. Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. For trying, you know. <laughs> Uh, okay, and do you have uh, a favorite part of the day when you like to create? Or um, now the day, it doesn't matter if it's morning. It, it doesn't morning. matter. It's, it's not the type of the day, it's what I see. Because okay. urban sketchers, we practically sketch whatever they, we find interesting. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like when we're waiting on the bus station, waiting at the airport, and the flight is delayed. So what do you do? Oh, you see something like sketch. Others hate it when when their their travel time is delayed or you know they have problems with the transit. For urban sketchers, no, that's opportunity to sketch. <laughs> like yay, we have more time to sketch. So so it that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. There's no boring moment for mm -hmm. urban sketchers because we always have something interesting to sketch. Even the trash can becomes interesting. A rusty a rusty key hole or a rusty gate. Anything can become interesting for urban sketchers. So it's like you always have for inspiration to, to draw. It's more of we find inspiration everywhere. Every, yeah. yeah. And um, people that don't notice some things that we see, like, why are you sketching the trash can? Because it's a nice colored trash can. <laughs> or the fire hydrant. So why? Because it's nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have a time of the day or anything like that specifically. Mm -hmm. Although it happens to be usually after work or during the weekends, mm -hmm. right? Because that's when you have more time. Uh, a lot of it is impacted by weather. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, the rainy, foggy weather, not that good. And when it's cold, it's not that good either. We discovered that a few days ago when we arrived to Warsaw and uh, it was like seven degrees and windy. So that wasn't really pleasant to sit out there. We did, but uh, we're looking forward now to Vilnius and 17. So yes, thank you. Thank you for getting better weather for us. We appreciate that. We booked it, actually. Oh, that's oh. great. <laughs> works for us. You, you called for the weather to be nicer, that which is works perfect. For us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. OK, so understood that well, weather is important. Maybe you have and some like rituals what you do while we sketch it, like drinking coffee or listening to the music or something like that? Um, for me, I don't have any. I don't have any ritual as long as I have, I have my sketching tools with me. Um, that's it. Like, because I have to be quick. As soon as you see something, because otherwise it will move. Um, just sketch immediately as soon as you see something interesting, and and just enjoy the moment. Yes, I guess there is a ritual that uh, applies to many urban sketches, I think, and even Isabel, she just cannot think of it now. <laughs> but we have hats that we ha carry on because oh. it's really important <laughs> to have something you know, on your head to, to shelter yourself from the sun, especially if you're looking into the sun mm. uh, and, uh, and sitting down and looking up and down, up and down, having a hat and most painters or sketchers that are out there plein air um, battling the element or battling the sun, they will you'll see that they have those big hats on them. That's sort of like a, it's not a fashion statement really, it's a, something that's very usable. And 
I only discovered that really when I forgot to take my hat once, you know, and that was not a good day. So hat and a little seat and things like that, that we have, but that's part of the gear that we carry around. So the ritual may, perhaps might be to pack your gear for the day according to how you feel. Maybe you will be painting in color, maybe we'll be doing something in just one tone or black and white or what have you. Different techniques, you know, pencil, ink, what have you. Um, that's maybe the, the ritual as far as I'm concerned, but the one thing that I have to make sure is that I have my sketchy hat on me, and otherwise it doesn't come out well. Okay, okay. So okay. good. Understood. And maybe you have what any negative thing uh, to say about urban sketchings and the negativity? Um, urban sketching is a fun group, and it, I could say that it's not perfect. But uh, the only the only negative things I would say is, aside from there's a rigid manifesto that you have to follow, but that's also a, a, an advantage because uh, that's what makes urban sketching unique in its own and not comparable to the other um, art group, I would say. But uh, sometimes it could be rigid and not so clear to anyone like uh, when you say we sketch one drawing at a time we show the world one drawing at a time so what does it really mean does it mean you only sketch one drawing a day or it's not clear but now because I'm also part of um, uh, the membership committee we are trying to clarify all of that based on what Gabi Campanario, the founder of Urban Sketchers, has has uh, has published in his book, and it's actually just showing a bit of your drawing one at a time. I have a lot of positive things to say, it, mm -hmm. re primarily, really, because uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, since I got involved in the, with the group, I met a lot of people that are like-minded, that are you know, artistically inclined, but they like to travel the world and uh, just uh, meet other other cultures, other person, other you know, get immersed into a different uh, language and uh, spaces and and everything else, you know, uh, uh, landscapes and smells and everything else. It's all new, uh, and the, the urban sketching gives me an opportunity to participate in that and absorb it, but also remember it much better. Because contrary to taking, you know, a thousand pictures that you can with your phone, you just sit down there and you just take one memory, one record of that moment in time when you are sketching it, and it stays with you for a long time. Pretty much forever, I think. So uh, I would say that's the, the best thing that I that, that's why I do urban sketching, because I like remembering the moment and making a, a, a little time capsule of it. Just, just lock it up in your sketchbook, in your, in your sheet of paper, and have a, a record of that particular visit. As a matter of fact, I don't think we do that many pictures anymore. We sketch, and that's the plan for vineyards for today. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. In, in addition to what he mentioned, because um, aside from remembering the moment that you are sketching, you also interact with the locals. They talk to you and then they will say, oh, this place, my grandmother used to live there and this, this is the story of the house. Small children will come, can I look at your picture? You meet new people. And then we also have symposiums, regional events. That's when you meet and interact with sketchers from all over the world. You cannot speak the language, but you can speak through your drawing. So it's, it's something beautiful that Urban Sketcher has. And it showed um, by all of, the, all of the communities all over the world. We have more than 360 chapters now and um, 80 plus countries. And it's still growing. So something is really good going on in the urban sketching community and that's what I like about urban sketchers. It's not exclusive, it's inclusive. Everybody's welcome as long as you that's can true. have a paper and a pencil. And you can have fun with it. And you can have fun with it. 
that's the yeah. Yeah, prerequisite mm. of fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah, nice one too. Yeah, it sounds very interesting. Uh, Isabel, you mentioned that inspiration finds you in, in various situations, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, are there times that you are not inspired to draw and what do you do then? Oh, I have plenty of those too. Yes. Because <laughs> I have, yeah, all of us, we have two sides of our brain. Yes. And compared, I think Marek has more of uh, the artistic side of his brain, like more of the right side. My logical side can sometimes interfere with my with my drawing because I'm more into business. And uh, if I don't have inspiration, I don't have any inspiration. I don't have. I cannot think. I cannot sketch. So what I do is, you know, I swatch paints. <laughs> so that's when I do. Like I swatch. Oh, I have my new watercolor. <laughs> <laughs> and I have this impulsiveness of I have I need inspiration I need to go to an art store and smell <laughs> smell art supplies and then he would say don't you have enough she art supplies she doesn't smell she buys <laughs> <laughs> of course why would you go why would yeah you, you smell and then you buy why would okay. you go to an art store and not buy anything it's like buying shoes and bags so as soon as i at least now art supplies no more shoes and bags <laughs> so if i go to an art store, oh i still don't have this color blue color red oh i still need the three colors so i buy those and then start swatching and that's when, the <laughs> and that's when inspiration comes. comes oh i can do something about this so that's my inspiration to go shopping <laughs> I don't go shopping, but I do though. I, I, I will often, especially now, you know, when we had this COVID situation, um, and we weren't really allowed to go much out, I would uh, sort of share my artwork with uh, people online, and that, that also the creation of it. And very often, I would just simply turn on a broadcast of it, you know, and then some friends that I never met. Uh, would just jump on it and then we can sort of talk back and forth while I'm trying to draw something and uh, often I don't know what it's gonna be but I just pull out my fountain pen and uh, just draw on uh, on paper and something comes out from it um, most times I have no idea what is it gonna be so the funny is when they are seeing something right I'm just drawing lines or or, or or wiggly, squiggly, wiggly lines, and somebody says, oh, it looks like a ship, or it looks like a tower, or what, what have you. It looks like a dragon. And there's like, where do you see a dragon here? You know, like, take it the other way. I don't really see it, but oh yeah, okay, so let's make it into a dragon. And uh, that's just part of the, yeah. the fun. But there is such a, such a thing as an artist block, and I think everybody has a different way of overcoming it. Uh, so Isabel has hers, uh, I have mine, um, as long as it works, uh, as long as we keep progressing and doing something every day artistically, I think that's uh, just to keep it up. That's the important thing. To me, consistency is the important. Draw, sketch, paint, do something every day. I mean, if you were a professional dancer, you would have to dance every day, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's what I say, draw every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're drawing like every day, and my question is, uh, what is important when you choose your sketchbooks or paper? How do you choose it? Um, for me, because um, I have my my favorite, my my, my favorite set set of um, art materials that I use. There are standard set, and these there are tryout sets mm -hmm. for me. So I have sets of brushes that I always carry with me, pencil. And aside from this, paper is very important because for, for me, everything else is um, reliable as long as you have a very nice paper. Because like, you, you need to put your art on a surface. So for me, paper is important, especially if it's uh, watercolor paper because I, I use uh, watercolors and wet media. Uh, I like playing with uh, watercolor papers that's uh, like heavy, heavy materials. And uh, it has to be um, like good quality and portable. 
I guess for me it starts with the size first because I'm a sort of like a little bit of a maxi size, you know, when it comes to to, to my preference for drawing. I like uh, larger tools, larger pieces of paper. So I really love it when you can open a, a, a spread that goes all the way across and you can have it all the way going, you know, it's, it, because just because even though there is not much sky, but it's just, it gives me a large area of uh, of opportunity of, of showing something. So size and portability, that's mm -hmm. important for an urban sketcher because you know, we go out and um, um, often travel with a backpack and uh, only a few things. Watercolors are relatively light, relatively small and not very heavy. So you can really travel with them around the world rather easily. Uh, but paper is, can be heavy, especially if you're using large uh, sheets. Um, or large formats. Um, I sometimes use single sheets, but uh, I also like sketchbooks as well. Although I sometimes have difficulties finishing the sketchbook, I have to tell you that. <laughs> this is one that I have finished all through, from page one till the last, very, you know, it's all filled. And I'm very proud of the fact that I was able to finish at least this one. I have many other ones that I failed on, but uh, uh, this sketchbook here it works fine. It's called press. That's my preference. Um, it's heavier paper. This one here it happens to be 200 grams, but somewhere there in that range is sort of the sweet spot in between portability, uh, so having something light and having something heavy enough that it can take water in a watercolor wash. Uh, and on ink is relatively easy, but it's, it's, the, it's the color in the watercolor, the, the, the water that you know, will buckle your paper surface a little bit, sometimes too much, but then you press it down overnight under some books, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> okay. okay, so for example, when you go to Vilnius Old Town, how did you choose what sketchbook to bring? Can you bring this one? This is your like, hey, but it's fun or is it? But then you think about it or go ahead. The paper it, it also depends, like for, for Vilnius, um, this size is okay, mm -hmm. uh, but I also carry different sizes of sketchbooks with me. Sometimes I have uh, like a big, a big one, like something bigger than this one, this size and a small one, mm -hmm. right? Because if I see like, if it's a really nice location, I'll finish one and then the next, or I'll finish I'll be starting one and then the next while I'm waiting for the other one to dry. So, and if these are still wet, I will start with a small one and do people sketching on my small sketchbook. So you usually bring a few of the sketchbooks? Uh, yeah. To yeah, that's why portability is yeah. important because mm -hmm. otherwise it will be too heavy. Yeah. It will be too heavy, especially if you're flying out to a destination, it will be a big weight on your luggage. Yeah, then the airline charges you too much. Uh huh. <laughs> bringing, bringing in. But if uh, <laughs> coming here, we know that there's SMLP everywhere here. We actually didn't bring much <laughs> because but, we know we will be. Uh, we we have resources for for paper. We can buy it locally. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's nice to have sometimes a sketchbook that has a hard cover. Mm -hmm. because when you open it up, you can actually have a support mm -hmm. to it, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's, it's a trade-off depending on what it is. If everything has hard cover, then you add up a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And we seem to be talking about weight all the time here, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a factor, uh, especially if you carry three or four of those sketchbooks with you. Um, they, it's, uh, some people will just have uh, a sketchbook with a soft cover like this one here, mm -hmm. Uh, but then they just put a, a board underneath and they just have one board and multiple of those uh, type of sketchbooks, which are just great because all you need is something to be able to draw on, whether you're sitting down or standing up. Um, you know, those, uh, these sketchbooks are very popular here in, uh, in, in, our, in our circles of friends. I'm sure. <laughs> um. Do you think your art uh, affects society and people in any ways, and how? 
like uh, Urban Sketchers as a group, for example? You know, when I started Urban Sketching, um, people are just curious of what, what we are doing. So, Urban Sketcher, what is that? We try to explain that we sketch on location, it doesn't have to be um, gallery material to be hung on the wall. It is something you did because you wanted it and you did it for yourself. So in a way, now that urban sketching is growing, I think it, it already created the impact to other people, not just locally, it's the whole globe. And just as I mentioned before, people became one, especially if we are meeting at the symposium. It's, it's a meeting of all the artists from, from everywhere. Or a reunion, if you've met this person from the other side of the globe who will only come to the symposium. So I'm pretty sure Urban Sketchers, the community of Urban Sketchers has already a great impact to, to society. And it helps people relax. If someone is stressed, oh, what will I do? Join the Urban Sketchers. Oh, I don't know how to draw. We will know, you will know how to draw. We will teach you how. I don't have any money. You don't need money. It's for free. So, yeah. We invited people to come and join us. And they stick to the group. They, they, they sketch and they're looking forward to every meeting. So, I think that's the biggest impact. Like, opening, opening the world of drawing to everybody. It became very commonly accepted that people in that group, they don't have to be professional artists, you know, designers, architects, what have you. They are people doing any kind of other work, non-artistically related or non-artistically inclined. They just want to try it and many of them, they will stay. So I think it does have an impact that way, that it simply brings arts to the masses and to some it could be a little bit therapeutic as in it helps them out you know to express yourself and just you sit with yourself you slow down you put your phone away i know that's very uh, it's a big ask to do that these days but uh, the, it's actually difficult to to imagine that you know you can sit down for half an hour or so and just draw something and have achieve some a state of happiness mm. uh, that's what we have when we draw I, when we are in a location like you know Vilnius old town there's so many things to draw it's just like, draw this draw that turn around draw another way mm -hmm. and uh, to me that's what I want to do that's why we came here specifically to have our own mental record of that a memory that's locked in a sketchbook then you open it up and you see, oh yeah, I remember, you know, there was a bakery next door and it had, they were making that wonderful bread and I was throwing and smelling it and I had to go in and buy it. Or a coffee or something else, or maybe a brewery like we are in here today. So it's, uh, it's all positive, but it does bring uh, happiness to the masses. Very nice. Uh, and I have the last question. Uh, do you have any other hobbies except uh, apart from sketching? My other hobby actually is photography. Photography? Yeah, I, it started. Um, it, it was my hobby before I went into sketching. Mm -hmm. So I was doing photography before. I have my SLR. Like um, I didn't shift to DSLR because I immediately shifted to best camera on my phone. So that's just what I did. So I still do a little bit of that but just using my phone and now with urban sketching I can combine both I can take photos that I use for like my demos or give out to my students because you use reference when you're teaching online and um, I take photography and sketch at the same time so it's two in one it's yes, related hobbies so that's that's one thing I have a totally non-related hobby, which is exact opposite of, in a way, well, in a way, because uh, um, I like sports that are powered by the wind. 
So uh, like windsurfing, for instance, or sailing or things like that, right? anything like that. But so in, in a way it's uh, compatible with uh, sketching because when it is too windy, then your sketchbook and your paper flies away, right? From, and you have to clip it all the time and fight with it. And, and if you have an umbrella for the shade that gets thrown away and your entire tripod, you know, just flips over, that's not good. So uh, it, I noticed that when I went uh, sailing down uh, on the Atlantic side of, uh, of the United States, uh, there's a, a place there um, which is very windy normally. That's where the brothers Wright flew their first plane, right, in Kitty Hawk. And uh, so we go there to, to sail because it's a very windy place. But when we arrived, for some reason, there was not much wind. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go and sketch because I have this time that's down. We cannot really go on the water because it makes no sense. So I grabbed my, all my stuff, you know, and went sketching. The moment I start set, setting up and sketch, the wind comes. So I run back. So after three, three days, it happens in a row. Then the fourth day, they say, Marek, go out sketching again because you are luck in bringing us wind the moment you set up. So in a way, they are opposite, but they seem to be working with each other quite well. See, so thank you very much uh, for sharing all of this. Uh, and thank you very much for coming to talk to us and uh, to give us your opinion and uh, uh, ideas of how the urban sketchers work and uh, everything about you. It was really, really nice to, to get to know you a little bit better. And guys, we are finishing up today and thank you very much for watching and you can follow us and our lovely guests all on social media. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. for the invite. Bye bye.